So today we're going to talk about 10 meta stats to blow your mind. Apparently when you type in blow your mind, it's a song by Dua Lipa. I did not know that. So that's why we've got the picture of Dua Lipa there. And uh, this data is taken from the 12th of May. Yes, this is how you write a date if you are an American. The 12th of May, because you say 12th of May. That's why it goes 12th of May, uh, all the way to uh, yesterday, which was uh, the 2nd of June. Uh, so if you're an American, don't get confused by this. This is how you write a date correctly. Uh, but yeah, it's taken from uh, all of that time period, which was basically when Fade went live, essentially, uh, to, you know, yesterday, and uh, from all the VCT regions. Now, uh, this means that all the EMEA group stage games, NA, Brazil, LATAM, uh, all the Korean games that have happened so far, which isn't many because they started a bit late, uh, some of the Japanese games, and not all of the APAC games, but uh, some of the APAC regions, some of the, the more major APAC regions are involved as well. So, uh, with that said, let's, uh, let's just dive in, and we're going to go from kind of least surprising you might say, to most surprising. Now, obviously, we don't have a massive data set yet. Obviously, this isn't the whole of VCT or anything like that. Uh, so basically, what I've decided to do is pick out 10 things that like seem pretty certain, where the numbers seem to, you know, be pretty high. Like, you know, this is like a, a, a thing that seems to be already pretty confirmed. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's heading in a direction. So let's take a look at number 10. And I mean, I'm going to try and breeze uh, through them a bit here. But number 10, as you can see, and I've kind of made a video on this already, and that is Fade on Ascent. Is really good. You can see Fade's pick right here is 32.72%. Uh, uh, the numbers in brackets here are, uh, you know, basically the, the actual numbers. So 53 games as Fade has played on Ascent out of 162 total uh, comps that she could have been involved with. Uh, her win rate out of uh, those 53 games is 30 out of 53, so 56.6%, which is very good, of course. And her non-mirror win rate, so this is kind of more important overall, uh, your non-mirror win rate. So that means when one team has picked Fade and the other team hasn't picked Fade, her non-mirror win rate is a pretty high 62.07%, uh, 18 out of 29 games as you can see there so fade is doing pretty well on ascent and we even have a non-mirror round win rate as well now the round win rates for these non-mirror games will basically tell us like okay you might be winning a lot of games but are you winning them close and then when you lose are you getting destroyed right so you could have a very high non-mirror win rate but if your round win rate was something like you know very close to like 50 or 49 you might say like oh okay so Fade is only just winning close games, but losing perhaps, you know, more, more than she should be. Now, these round win rate uh, percentages aren't ever going to be super high. They're never going to be like 70, 75 percent, because that would mean winning like an average of 13, like 4, 13, 3, which is just not going to happen. You know, most games are going to end 13, 9, 13, 10, right? So it's always going to be around 50 percent. Don't expect anything crazy. And 55 is actually a very healthy number here uh, for Fade. This basically means for every like 13 rounds fade is winning the opponents are winning about 10 rounds so if you have that kind of ratio of 13 to 10 uh you know you're doing really well and uh, so fade on ascent is uh it's just really good coming at number nine we have viper on bind and this one i think is a bit of a surprise uh because viper obviously was a, a must pick on bind with the old viper uh, but then obviously after the nerf we can see in the pick right here that actually only about a third or so of teams are picking viper on bind which I think it's a bit of a surprise anyway, because I think most people would probably see Viper as a, a very strong pick on bind, and she is a very strong pick on bind. And I think with this win rate, you know, 20 out of 33 here, it's not a lot of games, uh, as you can see, um, and the non-mirror win rate, 11 out of 15, it's not a ton of games. Um, but let me explain why I think that this is still pretty significant nonetheless. The reason that I think this is still significant for Viper and the fact that she's doing well on bind is because everyone knows how to play against Viper on Bind because she was an auto pick, you know, in the old meta with Viper, right? There are no pro teams that have never played against Viper on Bind. There is no surprise factor coming in, like you might say there is with Fade on Ascent, where, you know, teams will get more used to it and, and that win rate might come down. With Viper on Bind, this is going to be consistent because everyone has played against Viper on Bind before many times. So there's nothing new that's like crazy going on, right? She is just good. And uh, considering her pick rate is, you know, only 34%, but her win rates are very, very high. Her non-mirror round win rate is also very high as well. It says pick Viper on Bind, right? I think most people would except the Viper is a pretty strong pick on Bind, but they're going for other things because, you know, oh, we want to do this instead. Or maybe don't do that instead. Pick Viper on Bind because she's clearly very strong, and even though teams know how to play against Viper, 
she's still doing very well. Next up, we have another one that I'm sure if you asked a lot of coaches of pro teams, they would say, yeah, Keljo is good on Icebox, but we'd rather do this. Well, stop doing whatever else you want to do. Pick Killjoy on Icebox because as well, she only has a 9% pick rate, but she is doing very, very well. You know, a 68.42% win rate. Uh, and all of her games have been non-mirrors, but, you know, she's doing very well in those games. She's doing very well round-wise as well. Killjoy is just doing very well on Icebox in general. She seems to just fit the map very well. And, uh, you know, this, this is such a low pick rate overall. But Killjoy is just really good on this map. And I think that, you know, more and more teams should lean into this Killjoy. Obviously, a lot of teams are probably thinking, well, we've got Chamber, so we don't really need it. Well, Killjoy is, is massively outperforming Chamber on Icebox overall. So really, more teams should just be picking Killjoy. And I think after the Chamber nerf, we have seen a couple more teams lean in that direction. I wouldn't be surprised if more teams end up going that way. Um, and more teams should go that way because Killjoy is really strong on Icebox. Coming in at number seven, we have Sky versus KO on Breeze. Now, this is one that I think, again, people would probably be a bit surprised by. Um, basically here, you know, most teams will tend to go for Jet, Viper, uh, Chamber, Sova, and one of Sky or KO. Those are kind of, you know, the main two comps that a lot of teams run. We are seeing some differences now with the Jet nerf, you know, some teams going for other things, but it seems like if you do want to go for one of those two comps, you should be picking Sky, uh, as you can see here, because you can see that most teams are going with KO over Sky overall. There is actually a couple games where they're both played together. Uh, DRX are, are kind of going with a no duelist pick both initiators comp. Uh, but you can see that Sky, the win rate is just better overall. The non-mirror win rates are better overall. KO is actually struggling quite heavily. Um, maybe because he is, you know, the more picked and so more people know how to play against it. But it seems that, you know, Sky is doing very well. And I know that certain teams like, uh... For instance, uh, Mech, you know, who are a very good Breeze team, they prefer Sky. Um, DRX, I think before they went to the triple initiator, they were preferring Sky as well. So, you know, some of the best Breeze teams in the world are picking Sky. And I think that Sky overall, as we can see by these numbers, is outperforming KO on the whole. And so if you are a pro team, you probably might want to lean with the Sky a bit more than you do KO on Breeze. Coming in at number six, this one's a bit different. And this is the G2 comp, uh, where I want to just talk about this comp, which is Killjoy, Sova, Chamber, Viper and Sage. I've talked about this comp before. This is obviously for Icebox and the G2 comp on Icebox is just really good. Not a lot of teams are playing it, but basically I went through all of my stats and was kind of just looking for, okay, let's look for a comp that has played at least 10 games. Which one has the highest win rate? And it's this one because uh, this comp has won nine out of its 11 games. The G2 comp, it's doing absurdly well. Its round win rate is extremely high as well. Um, and it's just a really solid comp, right? We've seen other teams like Fnatic uh, adopt this comp as well. I think even Paper Rex have played a couple games uh, of this comp and it and it just works. It just works. It just fits the map very well. I think it gives you a play style that obviously on the defensive side, you've got triple Sentinel plus Viper Sova. Like you're gonna be good on that defensive side. Um, but on the attacking side as well, I think it gives you a pretty clear identity on the attacking side, you know, where you're going to go as a group a lot of the time, you know, you're going to walk it up there, you're going to get the spike down and then just try and, you know, just defend that area. And as soon as you get that spike down, you know, you should be good. I think it just works really, really well. I think that, you know, basically Icebox... As we go forward, I wouldn't be shocked to see Icebox just turn into G2 comp versus how do we counter the G2 comp. Obviously, we've seen Mech with the uh, the Brim pick on Icebox try and counter this comp, which I think was pretty successful. Uh, but yeah, this comp, I think, is just a, a very, very strong comp indeed, and more teams should be running it. But now we're starting to get into the really wacky stuff, because as we come to number five, we have Astra versus Omen on Haven. And I'm sure if you've asked just people in general, who's better on Haven, Astra or Omen? You know, most people would probably say Omen, and uh, you can see that in the pick rate, but it's not close at all. Here's the thing. Every team in VCT so far has either picked Astra or Omen on this map. There's been no Brims, no Vipers, of course, uh, on Haven so far in VCT. So, you know, it's always been Astra or Omen. But you can see that when it comes up to Astra versus Omen in these games, Astra is winning three quarters of the time which is absurdly high. Astra is dominating Omen on this map. Now, on other maps like uh, Ascent or Split maybe, where you would also have this question Astra v Omen, it's actually quite close. You know, it, it's not really heavily weighted one side, but for, on Haven, for whatever reason, 
Astra is dominating. Now, maybe that's because you can get the suck into the A lobby, which is very important, you, you know, which just is it's like an extra way of controlling that, that area on the defensive side. Maybe it's the fact that, you know, if you're playing like on, on A or C as, as Omen, you know, it's going to take you a while to get that smoke all the way across the map for your teammates. Whereas with Astra, you can put that star down already and, you know, be, be right there and have that smoke for your teammates on the other side of the map. Maybe it's, it's those kind of things. Maybe Astra, you know, maybe the suck and the stun is just better for this map overall than the omen flash whatever it might be astra is just outperforming omen on this map and really more teams should be picking astra right i mean i can think of other things as well you know the, the astra wall on this map for any time the spike gets planted b is actually quite useful on the defensive side right the astral can be a bit hit or miss but in, in that instance it's very strong so i think more teams should be picking astra on this map you know, the stats are pretty clear that Astra seems to be the better pick, and so uh, maybe more teams should be leaning into that. Number four, we have Sova on Bind. I kind of spoke about this before, uh, but you know, there isn't too many teams that are still leaning with Sova after the nerf on Bind, but my god, those teams that still are, stop. Uh, because it's it's not really that good because Sova's win rate on Bind, there isn't many games played overall. He has a 17 uh 0.71% pick rate here, but as you can see, the win rate is super low. The non-mineral win rate is uh, super low. His non-mineral round weight is atrocious, like atrociously bad to get to like down to like 40.89%. That is atrociously bad overall. Please st stop picking Sova on this map. He is not good. I mean, there's even like we have Fade now. Like if you want an information agent on Bind pick fade like she's just much better for this map she works much better on this map the prowlers are very strong on this map like the i cannot believe anyone is still picking silver on bind it doesn't make any sense and so if you are a team that's you know like oh maybe we should drop silver on bind please do because he's so bad it's just such a troll pick it's just not working for pretty much anyone at this point and uh yeah i would be surprised if we kept seeing silver on bind as more teams uh, implement the fade but number three is our girl jet on icebox because this one is down there as well uh quite a, a bigger sample size you might say overall because jet's pick rate is still very healthy on icebox but it shouldn't be because her non-mirror win rate is atrociously bad again her non-mirror round win rate is pretty bad again and so you know look this win rate number is getting dragged towards 50 percent because the pick rate is so high right like if you go from the non-mirror to the to the overall win rate like this is just getting dragged there because of how often she is getting picked right um but other than that she is just a bad pick on on icebox and really i think it makes sense right like you have chamber now if you want an op character on icebox he's better than jet overall on the op so you know, that kind of fulfills that role for you. And then you have to ask, well, what is Jet really giving us on Icebox, right? Like, we're never really dashing into sight or anything like that. Okay, maybe you can get on top of a couple boxes as Jet, you know, both on the attackers and defensive side, which is like, okay, but... Again, is is that really enough to warrant picking someone on a map? I really don't think so. And so, you know, more teams just need to just scrap the jet. You know, go play the G2 comp instead. You know, change that jet for, for whatever it might be, a killjoy. And uh, you'll probably find a lot more success on this map. Coming at number two, and this one might not shock some of the more casual players of the game, but I think it will shock some of perhaps, you know, the, the more coach-sided uh, people or, you know, pro players. And it's Breach on Haven. Now, Breach has become kind of a, you know, auto-include to, to an extent on Haven. You can see the pick rate is extremely high. You know, we have 109 games here out of 134 on Haven. So, pretty much almost every team is, is picking Breach at some point on Haven. You know, pretty much every team, I'm sure, has tried at least picking Breach on Haven. But when teams don't pick Breach and the other team does... You can see it's not going well because he's only won four out of 19 games. And I think people would be shocked by this because as I kind of mentioned before, I mentioned it on uh, the Sentinels video recently, A main has become like A lobby, I should say, uh, that little square of A as you first go in as the attackers has become like a central point of the map that, you know, attackers and defenders will fight over. And Breach is like a, a just massive, massive part of that as well. But it seems that maybe everyone has gotten used to that. Maybe people know how to counter it. Maybe it's not as important as people think. And, you know, these teams that aren't running Breach are, you know, just saying, well, fine, have your A lobby control. Well, you know, our fast C hits are really good, so it doesn't matter. 
uh, you know, I don't know what it is exactly. Maybe Breach isn't that good on the attacking side, uh, you know, and that's costing these teams. Whatever it might be, Breach is not doing well. And look, the non-mirror round win rate as well. It's not like he's, you know, oh, we're, we're just losing and, you know, our, our wins are dominant and our losses are close. No, your non-mirror round win rate is also pretty bad. Like, they're losing pretty bad as well when a team doesn't pick Breach and the other does. So... I don't know exactly what this means uh, because Breach is, is pretty much a mainstay of Haven for most teams. You know, most teams will probably like be building their comp around Breach a lot of the time and what Breach offers on this map. But it seems like it's just, it's not working for whatever reason. And this one was really a massive shock to me overall. And then last but not least, we comment number one. And I'm sure anyone who's like a big fan of mine who, you know, watches the streams and whatnot will already maybe know this. But uh, number one is Chamber isn't OP? Question uh, mark. Because obviously, if you ask again, most pros and uh, most pro coaches even, they would all tell you Chamber needs enough. Chamber definitely needs enough. But here are the non-mirror uh, win rates across all maps for every agent that has at least 50 non-mirror games. So if you have 50 non-mirror games in my data set so far, here is your win rate for all of these agents. And we're going here for the worst uh, to the best down here and down the lines like that. And you can see the chamber is slotting in right here. Uh, and he actually has the largest sample size of all of them at 147 games. And he's won 72 of them, which is just under 50%. And here's the thing about chamber, because chamber does get picked on pretty much every map. Uh, and here's the thing. On pretty much every map, He's doing like okay to slightly below average. I think split is the one map where he's doing like actually bad. But other than that, he's pretty much just okay to like, you know, slightly below average on every other map, which I know will shock some people. But I've been thinking about, so why then if Chamber isn't actually winning that many games, why is the, is the thought process that Chamber needs a nerf? And to me, the big thing here is that it's very obvious when Chamber wins a round, you know, he pops off with his ult, he gets three kills, you know, or he uses the, the headhunter on an eco and gets three kills. And it's like, this agent's just broken. You know, you get the first kill, you trade out, you can't be traded. It's very obvious when Chamber does that and Chamber wins a round for a team. But it's not as obvious when Chamber loses a round for a team. It's not as obvious when the flank isn't watched because you only have one trap and, you know, you get flanked and you die. You know, that isn't as obvious. It's not as obvious when you don't really have any attacking utility. You know, no one really mentions that Chamber is pretty much the worst attacking agent in the game. You know, he, he offers you a bit of, like, eco, you know, support. You know, his headhunter and his, his ult, you know, give you, like, a gun when you maybe wouldn't have a gun. Um, but other than that, you know, there isn't too much. Like, the trademark gives you a bit of flank protection that is okay on some maps and not great on others. And that's it, right? He's basically the worst attacking agent in the game. You know, Killjoy has nano swarms that can be part of an execute. You have better flank protection overall. The lockdown is, is probably one of the best attacking ults in the game. Uh, you know, Cypher has the cages, which allow you to get into different positions. You'll have better flank control as well. You know, the ult can be actually useful when you do get a good ult from, from Cypher. You know, it gives, tells you where to go. Uh, so Chamber is just the worst attacking agent in the game. And no one really talks about that. And no one really talks about the fact that, you know, he can cost you rounds as much as he can win you rounds. And one thing I've noticed as well, is Chamber was doing really well when he had two traps. He was doing it insanely well on the win rates overall. Ever since the one trap came in and that nerf came into pro play, he's been taking a nosedive overall. Like on some maps in particular, he has been taking an absolute nosedive on some of those maps. So yeah, Chamber turns out might not be that OP. It just seems it because when Chamber wins a round, it's so obvious. But when he loses a round, it's not quite as obvious. But then we can also talk about the rest as well. Uh, interesting for Breach here, you know, it might look really bad. You might be like panicking. Well, is Breach just really bad overall? Actually, no, because if you take out the Haven side of it, Breach is actually doing fine. On, other, on pretty much every other map he, that he gets played on, he's doing absolutely fine. It's just Haven where he's mega struggling, and that's what's really dragging him down. A big surprise to me was KO uh, as well down here, right? Like, where, because KO is doing okay on certain maps, um, and then not, obviously we saw on on, uh, on Breeze there, he's not doing as well, and it's like a couple maps, Split is another one, where KO is, is really struggling, uh, but on others he's doing okay. Uh, Omen, 
I think it's okay on most maps as a controller. This is kind of being dragged down when he's being played as like more of a, a, a duelist, you know, kind of like on Breeze, we've seen some teams replace, you know, Jet with Omen or things like that, right? On Icebox as well, kind of that thing. So that's kind of where Omen's being dragged down. Uh, and then uh, Jet again, Icebox is kind of really dragging it down, uh, mostly for Jet there as well. Um, and then these are kind of all okay. And at the top, we have uh, Fade, Neon, and Raze. Uh, I don't think most people will be surprised to see Raze here. She's just doing uh, pretty well overall. And uh, yeah, Neon and Fade also doing pretty well, perhaps because, you know, people are so used to Jet that, you know, these are these agents coming in on different maps are just doing pretty well. And Fade is obviously pretty new as well. So maybe these will, you know, regress slightly as people get more used to them. Uh, but yeah, the main takeaway is Chamber maybe isn't that OP. And so that was 10 meta stats. I hope you found that uh, somewhat useful. If you have any questions, please leave it down in the comments below and I will see you next time.